Right, five o'clock. Welcome, everyone. My name is Jennifer Knapp. This is my friend Aaron McKeown, and we are here to do a songwriters round for you. Um, I'm. I like to start. Oh, go ahead. I like to start it off as how. I, well, I want to start off two ways. One is that. The story of how I first met you. Can can you tolerate that for half a second? Yeah, because there's two sides to everything. <laughs> and I, so mine, mine. I don't know if I've shared this with you, but how nervous I was when we first did some gigs together. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah. So um, we we're two touring artists. We kind of got uh, hooked up together on tour. I'd never met Aaron before, and everybody, you know, like a lot of people say, like, oh, you're really gonna love fill in the blank and you're like I don't know what they think about me and I don't know who they met but this is a bad match anyway so people were talking to me about Aaron and how much I was going to love Aaron but I was really scared to meet you one because you're from a rocker camp and you've been doing rock and roll for a long time you're uh, a very articulate well respected queer person and you've been doing that for a long time I'm kind of like a new queer person in and I'm and, and insecure in my own musical ability. So you come in to me as like this big, larger than life, amazing rocker. And on top of that, the, the inferiority complex I have of coming out of Christian music. And I'm like, as soon as that person, the thing that I'm imagining, comes into this room, they're gonna hate me because every, most, a lot of people do. And they assume what they know about me as a person of faith, kind of skip all over the parts and then just dump all of that stuff on me. I'm like. That's going to be Aaron, because Aaron really looks cool, and that's probably going to happen. And then I meet you, and the first thing you do is like, you come up to me, and you're like this, beautiful, bright, <laughs> energetic, and you, you go, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I love cricket. Oh, and, I thought I said I love God. Well, and I thought that was your lead line, I'm being nice to you, because, yeah, I thought that's the first thing I remember you said to me. It's like, you, because we were busy and doing back, backstage things, yeah. and my, story, my memory of it was you coming to me and go, I need to talk to you. I love God. And yeah. that freaked me out, and I'm like, okay, I didn't hear that right. Yeah. But, I, and I, but the other part of that I'm missing is, like, we'd done a gig the day before, and I managed to avoid kind of talking to you in any substantial way. Yeah, it was a gig at a, at a venue that had multiple dressing rooms. And, um, yeah, so we didn't have an opportunity to, I mean, I, we did a song together on stage. I yeah. got to hear your set. Um, but, yeah, it was the next day we had to share a dressing room in Knoxville, and I, I, I was like, I, I love God. <laughs> You were like, what does that mean? I don't know how to talk to you. It's so <laughs> weird. So that's how we began to be become friends. And so the, the, I'm trying to... And we've been friends for a few years now. I've lost track of it. Um, and I was talking to you about Wild Goose Festival. And I said, oh, you should come. And then you, I don't know why, but you said yes. Well, because <laughs> I do feel like our friendship has been over... It's been. I think it's been about five years. It's kind of hard to imagine yeah. it's been that long, but... I think our friendship has been trying to unpack that sentence. I love God. Right. Right? And, and I happen to say it, but it, you the have context. a relationship with that sentence as well. And so I think what we've been trying to do is trying to unpack that sentence for five years over Zoom calls and hangouts at other festivals. And I, and I just took this invitation as um, another way to unpack that sentence. Uh, yeah, and, a, and it's been one of the coolest things. Yeah, so we're like yesterday when Semler and I were sitting here, we're like we were working out shit. It's kind of the same version. <laughs> yeah, we just we, I, well, I won't speak for you, no. but I love God, and I just want to like talk about that and find out how do you love God and like what is God to you and like if you hate that word, I want to know about it. If you love that word, what does that word mean to you? What does that word mean to me? Like, so that's that's why I'm here. And I don't get to do that in the rest of my career in these different places that I usually am. But I'm curious, so I'm going to make you play, I'm going to ask you to play a specific song. I, I'm sorry if I'm interloping on your first? set list. First, maybe. Okay, great. Whatever you want. Um, well, because I don't have to do it first, but. One of the first songs that I, I heard the words and what you were playing, you have a way of shocking me spiritually. <laughs> Not that I'm sure that surprises you, but the uh, the the queer gospel was one of the first songs. Like, oh, you've thought about this. Mm -hmm. You've thought about spirituality. You've thought about queerness. You've thought about queering the gospel clearly. Yeah. yeah. And when I and I think sometimes I don't want to speak for anybody else in the room. But I think sometimes when we discover something like a concept like queering the gospel, 
the first time you hear it and it resonates with you, you think that it's an extraordinary discovery that just happened because you've just discovered it, but to realize how long that's been going on. And then, you know, maybe, I don't know if you're like me, then five years later you get pissed off because you realize how long that's been going on and how long it took you to discover that word. But in, it shows up in your music in a very particular way. I love this song. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'll talk about it later, but this is one of the things where, like, mm. I want to know something about what you've learned by the song that you're singing me. Okay, I'm, I'll start with that song. I think it's probably appropriate, actually. To start there, and then we can, and then we can unpack it. Um, the quick, the quick version of why I wrote this song um, is that I had a tour in, in North Carolina in 2015, and it was when the sort of dumb bathroom bills were just going on in North Carolina at that time. And um, I forgot we're in North Carolina right now. Um, oh yeah, we are. <laughs> we are. Oops. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, it was when a bunch of artists were deciding to boycott coming to North Carolina. And um, I remember Bruce Springsteen was like, I'm not playing in Charlotte. And everybody was like, oh my God, the taxes, taxes, we're not gonna get the money. And I realized that no one would care if I didn't play in Charlotte. There'd be like 30 queers in Charlotte who didn't care and maybe 70 in Asheville that didn't care. It wouldn't make a headline. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't make a headline and it's just, and I was like, but those 30 people would be denied a queer space. Those 70 people in Asheville would be denied a queer space. So like, let me let me just come and be here. And all the venues that I was working with were great and we put special signs up and made everyone feel welcome and it was a great thing to do, right? Every artist gets to make their choice of how they want to do this work. And so Bruce Springsteen gets to choose that he doesn't want to come and I get to choose that I do want to come and those are both the right answers for us and for our work. Um, so anyway, I, I wanted to like leave something behind or have something that felt useful for that tour, so I wrote this song as like a song to bring to North Carolina for that moment. It's even better. And um, yeah, and then it's obviously, it's like it's taken on a nice um, life of its own. And I'll, um, you know, I'll, I will tell you before I play it, and I'll, I'll, this will be the one song I'm sure I'll play also tonight. Um, everything else would be different, but um, if you are a worship leader or something and you want this song for your organization, just email me and I'll send you the vocal arrangement and the sheet music for it. Um, and once you have that, you're welcome to pass it on to other people too. Um, and I've gotten yeah, I've gotten a number of a number of emails from different people, different churches and stuff asking for this, and that's great because I'm not a church person, so I'm like great. Great, I'm glad this is in your church. Uh, but anyway, that's the story of why this, the song was written. So. Love us as we are. See us and we're holy. In this shall we shall ever be holy ourselves. Your love will take us far. Praise us and I'll show you from heaven to the glory holes, glorious and free. There are those who think we're wicked. There are those who call us names. Depraved, lost and sick and would rather bathe us in shame. But we put the sin in sincere. We put the do in the doubt. God is perfectly clear. We are perfectly out. Love us as we are. See us and we're holy in this. Shall we shall ever be holy ourselves? Your love will take us far. Praise us and we'll show you from heaven to the glory holds, glorious and free. I believe in the ritual of lipstick, the sanctity of electric guitar. But it's cool if you're not that Catholic, you can be. Whoever you are Love us as we are See us and we're holy In this shall we shall ever be Holy ourselves Your love will take us far Praise us and we'll show you 
glorious and free. According to us and was ever thus, come join our jubilee. In this shall we, shall ever be glorious and free. my capo out of that gig bag, please. Um, thank you. The first time you said glory hole on a microphone mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that, at, I, it was kind of at a gig where I had skin in the game. Like, I had pe my, yeah, some of my people, people there. there. I had a hot flash. I got to tell you, like... I, but there, Does there, everybody here know what a glory hole is? <laughs> yeah, okay, great. I'll explain it tonight on the main stage. I, I think that would be awesome. <laughs> it's true, I will. I will. Uh, Thank you. Um, but the, and I, I think this is, I'm always freaked out at how like direct, like I really admire direct artists, like thank you so much, like Glory Hole in a Song. I, I th th those are the kinds of songs I write but never let anyone hear. I mean, this is not a sexy answer to your, to your interest, but like I just really like puns. And like, I'm sorry, but glorious and glory it's, hole is hilarious to me. And you don't. <laughs> so. It is, and it's great. And uh, that's what's beautiful, I think, about creativity is it right. leads us to what saying the free thing and the good thing, and it works. Right. I'm not trying to be offensive, and I'm not necessarily trying to be provocative, but like, I do a lot of crosswords, so <laughs> it's just it's like it leads me to what is for some people an offensive place, but for me, it's really just like, oh, those cool what what cool vowel sounds those are. Oh, I'm so I'm really envious of that. I, I, I really am because like I'm gonna write one to me what has been the like, most like provocative song for me. Okay, it's it? so pedestrian. <laughs> um, it's it's a song called Fallen and it's 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 about reclaiming like some of the mm -hmm. spiritual language and weird mm -hmm. things, right? The right. Pun, and puns are really great for right. that to be right. able to to subvert things or put them on their ears. Well. Um, like for me, the the idea that like and like sexuality in general, like sex in general in the church is a really fun topic. I enjoy it. Um, I enjoy sex. Um, anyway, uh, but when I when I started writing, I, write, I started writing this song about um, my relationship with my partner, and I'm gay. And in case you didn't know that, um, I know, right? But it's weird because I could have—I've written a hundred love songs, right? right. But that this, in my mind, was really specific about a specific relation, a very specific relationship that I knew was offensive to other people, and every part of falling in love that anything that I experienced outside my tradition, especially if it, that relationship was outside of a state of marriage, it was a fallen relationship. Mm -hmm. So that language to me was like. You always had, I was always feeling like in my own private, like having to work myself upwards of this judgment to be able to claim the things that if I was really honest, I wanted pleasure. Mm -hmm. I wanted this relationship and I wasn't a, a shit. Like in my, the rest of my life, I was doing all the things that I really meant and was nurturing this relationship. Yet in the back of my mind was this niggle the whole time, like you're living in sin. This is like all that shit that I really wanted to put away. Well, I'd never done the exercise from that of m putting that into my music and writing that down and calling it what it was. To me, this is incredible. Understand to me, when you hear this song, I, I actually hear it as pretty subtle, but as I played it for some of the first times I wrote it for the first time, it was incredibly overt. The first time I played it, I panicked. I'm like, my arms are just freaking out and spasming on stage because I'm like, everybody's gonna know this is a homo song. Like, I'm, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, it was, because it was so revealing about where it was at. Anyway, this is a, yeah, that's, that's the, the front of this. Instead, it's kind of a screwed up love song. Um, you know, like just kind of one of those things you're trying to reclaim your space back into the place where you want to be. And I want to, nope, that's the right key. Even though they say we have fallen Sorry Fallen Doesn't mean that I won't do it twice Oh, giving every 
Second chance I choose again to be with you tonight. Sorry is often told but hardly ever done. Not with you, my love. Not with you. stories that hold a bitter end not with you my friend oh not with you my friend I lift you up like a loving cup pour down on all the world and if this fable strong enough we'll drink more Second chance I choose again to be with you tonight. And so the wind blows cold, I say it's crisp and clear. All for you, my dear. Oh, all for you, my dear. too much. It's too much. I wouldn't be able to do that. And people ask me why I sing with my eyes closed. <laughs> you. I know. You uh, Well, like Hot Eyes with you, you're kind of half giggling but crying, and then you lost your shit, and then <laughs> I lost my... I was doing fine, and then I looked at you. That's a beautiful no, song. No, it's... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Look at, look at that service. Look at that service. Uh, 
I just I have deflected to what it, what happens. That I, I have to deflect it away from me. I do it every time. But I tell the story of the things that you the things that you know mm-hmm. in your soul that are yours. You will go through to get. Like you have to listen to that. And I think that's one of the challenges of of any of the systems that defeat us. They're usually the external thing telling you not to trust the thing in here. And it's, it's, it's taken me so many years to subvert that teaching because it's taught me that that's a very selfish thing. I was just having a conversation with somebody the other day about how that's such an arrogant thing to do, to follow your soul and to find that voice. Yet so much of our lives as creative people mm-hmm. is when it, like listening for that voice to lead us in the direction of something honest and good. And the, the strange thing is it it leads you through walls. And it, it challenges you to go over the obstacle, to go through it, to be hungry in the finest and holiest of ways. Um, I think, at least for me, it's very an encouraging thing to go for. It makes me think of a song. What song is that? <laughs> I hope it does. <laughs> well, well, it's, um, uh, it's a song without music, sometimes called a poem. Um, <laughs> We were talking about this particular topic earlier, but what you're talking about makes sense to me of, of um, this is a song about the opposite of that, right? This is the song about like, um, uh, I, think, I think many people, especially people who have a uterus, signed female at birth, socialized as female, whatever term you want to use, women, women, um, I think we struggle with our bodies, right? And um, and I'm no, I'm no different with that. We were just recently talking about this, and um, and it's that it's that tension between listening to what the the inner thing is saying and what the outer thing is mm-hmm. saying, right? And um, so usually I think I'm doing a pretty good job with like the inner thing. So like I'm I'm just like trying to stay healthy, eat good food, exercise, and like be okay with like w- however I am today in my body. And then every once in a while, I walk past a reflective surface, (laughs) and I get like a glimpse, right? And it feels like the whole thing crumbles. It feels like I cannot listen to that inner voice anymore. And I call that moment mirrors break back, right? So it's the opposite. Yeah, Yeah, so it's the opposite of what you're talking about, about trying to listen to yourself and trying to find that thing inside. This is when that's not enough, (laughs) when the outside uh, gets at you. So, So fragile, a delicate flame that burns out. So fleeting in nature, love for myself. One look, I'm full of cracks. Mirrors break back. Back and forth between faith and doubt, the stage and the shadow, the spring and the fall. The constant swing of it all gets me down, down. So the merry-go-round finds a way to come round so I can get up again. Amen. Tell me, do you feel the same way when? Mirrors break back. Ooh, break back. I never had a model. I only had a mother who compared ourselves to others, always another and another. I was taught to think the bitch takes up space. The witch gets burned at the stake. This history deceives me, leaves me vulnerable to attack. Uh Uh-huh. Mirrors break back. Ooh, break back. Mirrors break back. Ooh, break back. It's true. Sometimes I do think I'm beautiful. With strong hands and wrists, pulling on strings, raising fists. And when we shatter the glass, you punch that ceiling. Feels like we can all break through. But then you turn around and it turns on you. All of us know this realness too. We feel the same lows in our tight clothes. But at least we're less alone when those. Mirrors break back, ooh, break back. Mirrors break back, ooh, break back. For every action, there is the equal and opposite action. For every confident step, there is the backstab of fear. Backslash, backslide, slide, step into the negative. The former president. You are all wrong. The patriarchy is strong. And its biggest weapon is hanging in your house saying, you better check yourself. You better check yourself too late. Straight to my heart, it's cardiac. Mirrors break back, ooh, break back. Mirrors break back, ooh, break back, yeah. For every action, there's the equal and opposite action. For every hateful look, I will close my eyes and picture of fire and endless choir until I will not believe what I see when the mirror is trying to break me. 
I will look up. I will look out. How about I meet your eyes? And in that rhapsodic deed, mirrors break, ooh, break. That's the seed you are all the reflection I need. <laughs> So cool. I want to be you some days. I want to be you. But that. I do that, and oftentimes, yeah, my wife goes, mm mm. <laughs> <laughs> In a loving way, you know, like, baby, you got a little something on you? Like, mm mm. <laughs> uh, but I, I often get. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll like backtrack to some of my intimidation by a strong woman like yourself. Um, I, like, I often undervalue my own work in being direct. Well, I think we all do. I mean, I think that's part of being a socialized female, is to undervalue your work. I mean, that's not rocket science. Don't even no, clap, don't clap for that. <laughs> like, <laughs> and how many conversations you and I have talked, like, devolved into yeah. a feminist yeah. argument about our own experiences and weirdness and... Yeah habits that we learn along the way that we didn't realize until 10 years later. Like, I, I, I've got a weird artistic one that I talk about with female guitar players often for young players. It's a, it's a weird thing. What it's is it? completely unrelated. Bar chords. Oh, that female players should be playing more bar chords? Yes. Well, I agree. I don't think it's funny if you don't know how to play a bar chord. Y yes. I don't think it's cool, actually. If, if you don't know how. Yeah, and if you don't know how to play your instrument, I don't think that's cool. Well, the, the thing that happened to me when I was young, when I, was, I was starting to play gigs, yeah. I, I, I began to, to play guitar shooting on myself mm -hmm. in comparison to men. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have told it to, at that time, but I, mm -hmm. I do have, I know you, I've held my hands up and made that excuse, but you're, you have range on your fingers I'm jealous of even. But it was hard for me, and I, I, like, I do play bar chords, and my first record, I didn't realize it, was, was a ton of bar chords, like the whole record. But the, it, the whole time that I was playing those bar chords, I did them in response to, I, this sounds ridiculous, but I did them because I was afraid that if I didn't do them, people wouldn't take me seriously in comparison to other men and being a legitimate guitar player. Let me tell you, this acoustic guitar I got in January of 2020, that is the first acoustic guitar I've ever bought to play on stage. I only played, when you met me, I mm -hmm. only played electric guitar for more than 20 years for that same reason. Because I did not think people would take me seriously as someone who was not Ani DeFranco, right? If you didn't have if a I rock didn't and have roll machine. If I didn't have electric guitar, yeah. A rock and roll machine. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, and uh, yeah, so right, right before the pandemic, I got this guitar because honestly, like my shoulders are fucked up. Yeah. And like, I can't carry an electric guitar anymore, let alone an amp. And so, you know, I just was like, okay, well, now you have to live with your you expectations. Have to, you you have to figure out the <laughs> modifications you have to make along the way because you yeah, can't carry I, that shit anymore. I don't care anymore. if you think I'm like every other female singer-songwriter now, but I did care a whole lot about it when I was 20. But I know exactly those ex expectations. Yeah. It, wasn't, it was great for me to play electric guitar for 20 yeah. years. It's, it's weird that you, I mean, that's a, the, 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 the good side and the bad side to yeah. some of those things. Yeah. And I, I don't regret the way that I play. I've learned to love, and, like, love, learned to love my own limitations, even on something as mundane seemingly as an instrument. But the way all those things kind of pile up, you start looking at them going, wow, I'm building a lot of things around an insecurity that it's built on patriarchy, misogyny, religious trauma. Like, it's bizarre how they show up in your creativity and they get in my way of doing things. And I say, I will, I'll say no to things or be scared of doing something new and creativity is going, hey, over here, whatever. And I'll be, I can't say glory hole. <laughs> well, you just did. I know, I'm fine with it. But 10 years ago, I would have been like, I'm not sure I can hang out with Aaron because Aaron says glory hole on stage and I admit, <laughs> that's my work. Well, I did what, so I, it made me think of like the first song, the sub first subversive song that I ever yeah, wrote yeah, yeah, about yeah. misogyny. It was actually a relationship with, I was having with a man and it wasn't a sexual one for me personally, but I'm pretty yeah, yeah, sure it was for him. And I was, <laughs> I was trying to get away and out of it and like all those kind of backward looking yeah. things where you're like, I'm pretty sure I was, why did I not know? I was, why I was so not into that. It yeah. was just creepy yeah. as and pre me too and don't even get me started about how much I feel like the hashtag has been happening for a very long time and my investment in that but he was a me too got kind of fella and I wrote this for him and I wrote it for during the time I was doing Christian music and 
funny it never made a Christian record because one, it wasn't talking about Jesus, and two, every time I played it in front of a man, they got really uncomfortable. And so I don't know. Yeah, so this is like my first foray into trying not to be subversive and trying to say it out loud, but anyway. You mean, you mean trying to be clear? Like trying to be as yeah. clear as I knew how to be um, and still kind of upholding the, the hyperbole and the poetry, the, the poetry yeah. that I do actually enjoy. Sorry I ever gave a damn Sorry Sorry I stayed here for too long But I got a feeling you're not going anywhere If it made a difference I might grin and take it all in stride Walk an extra mile just for your pride If it made about his wife, then <laughs> I just got to say, because I was like, uh, I do not want to be in this triangle. Anyway, oh, that's a great song. Great song. What kind of triangle was it? Was it isosceles? <laughs> was it right? It was it, it was wasn't it wrong? a wrong. It wasn't a right triangle. It was like one of those where one of the points is really long and carrying a lot more of the load than should have yeah. been. Okay, wait. So when I said to you, "I love God," mm. wh what was so upsetting about that? I couldn't say it back. Oh. Like it was confrontational. I still like st I'm still weirded out that you say that. Like the level of comfort that you have with it, mm -hmm. out of all the conversations we have. And I'm like more, I'm fine with it. But I'm like, I, I, I wouldn't ever say that. I, I don't, I can't imagine in a million years walking up to somebody I just <laughs> met. I get in a cab with people and they find, you know, like the, the gig bag in the cab. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? And you like finally get to the point where you're like, just fucking Google me. Like, I'm famous. Like, that kind of thing. <laughs> and I know when they do, they sometimes they do it then and they the Christian thing comes up. I, I can't even do God then. Like, it's not that... I, all, all the frustration and all the baggage and everything else, I just, I don't... I wouldn't talk that way now. And 
the confrontation with you in that space, it's a gift actually mm -hmm. some years ago for me to go, wait, I'm allowing something that's mm -hmm. external to me and all these other things dictate what I get to keep mm -hmm. for myself. And uh, so I've enjoyed the gift of that part of our friendship. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've loved seeing somebody else who has something to say about mm -hmm. the language that you've chosen about that, mm -hmm. that in my wildest dreams I wouldn't have been able to create for myself. Well, I think it's because I'm not Christian. Uh, I, I mean, don't honestly, I just feel very free in that because I'm not Christian. And when I get stuck in the elevator with someone and they see the gig bag <laughs> and they say, you know, what do you do, a musician? Okay, what kind of music? I say Christian. Oh, no, really? <laughs> because it tends to shut people up. <laughs> So, why and then. I, why don't I get that person? Well, because you're Jennifer now. What did so I do like, wrong? <laughs> but, but I wouldn't have come up to you and said, I love Jesus. Because that's a very that, different. That would have made me. E I'm not sure we'd be still. No, I don't think we would be either. Um, and I would never have said that. But, but for me, like, it's um, a word. God is a word I do not have baggage with. It's something, it's an experience that I've discovered on my own. Um, with um, things outside of traditional religious things. And for me, it's a shorthand for a feeling of being taken care of. It's a, a feeling of uh, love. And my job is just to keep the channel clean. And, like, that's, that's it. That's really all I think it is. Mm. And I love that. And I love saying that to someone like you who, who shorthand or not, is going to have a relationship with that sentence. So... When the promoter says, do you want to split the spill with Jennifer Knapp? I can't believe you said yes to that. That's so well, weird. I can't believe I did either, and I didn't want to. I'll be totally honest. I never told you this, but, like, I Googled. I Googled you, yeah. and I was like, shit, it's another fucking lesbian with an acoustic guitar. <laughs> and I was, like, mad at the promoter. I was like, is that all you think I am? Like, and there's a number, and you've, I'm sure you've encountered this, yeah, too. Yeah, like, yeah. there are a ton of promoters who will, like, double down on something. They'll reduce you to something and then double down on it. So there's a number of promoters that I've worked with that I do not work with anymore who every time they suggest a co-bill is another lesbian with an acoustic guitar instead of like, wow, it would be really awesome to do something with a brass band from New Orleans or it'd be awesome to like open for like this like indie rock band or, you know, like the, yeah, their minds exactly are so small. Mean, yeah. So um, I said yes to it because the money was good. And... <laughs> And then I get one of my great friends out of it, and we get a great conversation. And that, that's God to me, because that's just funny. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, I mean, that's, that's, I'm grateful for it. But, but, but knowing that you have an experience with Christianity, with the business of Christianity, I know that you probably thought about that question. Or you probably thought about God, and it's a shorthand for yeah. something different to you. And all I'm trying to do is understand people's shorthand around that. What does it mean to you? And that's one of the things I, I've actually really dug about your your question, your our friendship, is because the, especially like in, in our environment as musicians, but prob really probably really actually in our ordinary daily lives, so much of what we do is that sh shorthand. Especially like it, it, the the conversation, the shorthand conversation of LGBTQ faith. People ask me, oh, how do you identify? How what's your faith? And it's. It's easy for me to go, I'm a gay Christian. I, I, I don't even like saying it now. It's not that I have an aversion to Christianity. That's the faith language of which I'm most, most fluid in. But if I tell anybody that I'm a Christian, that is the shortest of shorthands. And I don't even like it. I'm, it's, it's not reflective of who I am. It doesn't tell you anything about my journey. And it's actually feeding into something I'm trying to kill every day. <laughs> I mean, I'm working really hard to get us out of that mindset of that. And that's, uh, that's, for me, one of the joys of being able to meet somebody, at least, who challenges me to be able to hold on to something that I know I'm endeavoring to hold on to. Um, and I was, I'm trying to think of the language. I just heard it in my head. But as you were talking about it, I'm like, I want to change my answer of, mm -hmm. <laughs> of the, the God question and why that I'm still friends inside of that construct. But I'm appreciating being around a human being that's working toward that question of, of the God question and not necessarily trying to narrow to me like Jesus is really a limiting example of one of the things that God shows us or one of the communications of right. God which I just said a very kind of Christian language thing there 
and it's a shortcut of that. But if theologically, I would tell you, I think Jesus is a revelation of something that God has and could do, and we could say it that way. But there's a lot of other things. It's not just that one thing. Mm -hmm. And I want to be around the people mm -hmm. who know what that language is. And I, I not just meet it in your yeah. person forced through a green room. I started listening to your music. Right. It's, it's coming out in what you're doing and the shorthand and the, 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 the work is evident in the language and, and the direction of the body of your work. So it's an ongoing discussion that shows up in our art, and I like being friends with people who not just, you know, we don't just compartmentalize what we do. It shows up in weird ways, the growth and then the storylines of our creative stuff as well. Well, what I think you're doing too that I appreciate is that the, we, we come to this festival, you invite me to this festival, and really what I want to talk about is like crosswords and puns, <laughs> really, or like songwriting form. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I am. I am asking the God question again, just just to tick the box, you know, <laughs> in some ways. But then when we go to non spaces like this, right, then we bring that qu question of faith and thought and spirituality. We bring it to that space. So like, y'all need more puns, and mm -hmm. the like rock and roll world needs more conversation about faith. Yeah. And so I think like what I appreciate about what you're doing is you're acting as um, I don't know, like a like an awesome little animal I'm, that moves back I and forth honestly, in, those, in those habitats. I honestly feel like I'm out of space, out of out of sync with any Which environment. Which means you're doing your job. Like here, as an artist, that means you're doing your job. Here, I'm trying to convince you guys to let go of religion, and in the bars, I'm trying to convince people to not be afraid of it, mm -hmm. but don't be like you either. I don't want them to be like. And by that I meant, <laughs> you're laughing, so my assumption is that you know what I just meant by that. I don't want anyone to repeat the same thing. Yeah. And in, I'm an alien in some of those spaces, be, like for the same response that you had going, I, oh, I, another one of those, I don't want to be paired up with that anymore, I've done that. The same way as I go, I don't want to go to Wild Goose Festival. That was my response 10 years ago, and it still is every single year that I come back. <laughs> I wait, don't want to... Wait, Wild Goose, the only festival no one wants to go to <laughs> that goes to. Is that the new marketing line? <laughs> I'm not a very good marketer. And it's not a meant to... I, like, I want to think that I can move past some conversations because I know when I come here, the thing, the conversation I'm always ha having because I have a, a burr under my saddle. I'm like always working something out and unscrewing something that makes this conversation sometimes uncomfortable. And when I go to the other space, I know that my presence oftentimes in what's easily Googleable about me makes everybody in that bar uncomfortable because they think that I'm like what they think you were like. Mm -hmm. And it's what I know is like there's something in between that that and I, that's what I love about your art too is I think it communicates to a community in a way that I never could and you challenge you know it's mm -hmm. we fit our places in wherever we go but it's so strange that I feel out of water here sometimes not because you're inhospitable but because my missions is cantankerous and sometimes rebellious and I've got my own baggage with my own faith tradition right where I don't have that out in the secular space but in the secular space I'm representative of something that I didn't actually want to be yeah. labeled as in, in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the song Ping Pong's in your court. Oh, it is? Yeah, it is. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, does that in yeah. inspire you to think of anything? Yeah, it does. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I've got two options. Are we going to have time for a couple? What's the time? We've got 15 minutes. So okay, cool. You've cool, got cool, at cool. least two more songs. Okay. Um, I'm going to play you this one. Um, listening um, to, to you and similar yesterday and thinking about like early early songs <laughs> like your early songs yeah, yeah my early songs um, and I had forgotten about this song and this somehow seems like appropriate for this festival um, uh, I um, had, had a rough had a, have and have had a rough experience with my uh, family of origin and um, be, kind of beyond the normal teenage angst stuff and, um, and this is maybe the second or third song that I ever wrote. Um, and it was the first time I ever had a song just like come pouring out of me. Ooh. And I think it expresses like a, like a, it was, it was on Easter Sunday and I grew up Catholic. So it was an important day for us. And, um, 
my my mother's family is Italian. My dad's family is Irish, so yes, Catholic, and <laughs> um, like kind of working class immigrant cl- Catholic uh, tradition. And um, anyway, so it was a, was a family a family disagreement that day. It doesn't matter what. And um, in the basement, that movie, The Ten Commandments, was on. <laughs> It's, I don't know, I was just thinking about it from what y'all were talking about yesterday and just thinking about, like, um, trying to just ask these questions and, and live in a, a skeptical world um, that's also somewhat playful, takes it in pop culture, tries to understand what religion... I know that I was doing this. There's something in this song that I thought would be interesting in this space. Send us softly, Moses, speak. Quiet me to sleep. Easter Sunday Never tasted so bitter Lonely in the dark Images creep past Bright pink, purple, blue, green, and black Despair, oh holy day We walk down sorrow's way Weep, weep, we are the slaves on Easter Sunday Oh, and I wish that I could die for thee on a technicolor Calvary Egypt would be ours 10,000 years of peace Where happiness would lie Madness bids me say not all that Rises is of God For shame and guilt are Lord to me Administered like a pill A father heals none On Easter Sunday On I wish that I could die for thee On a, a technicolor Calvary Egypt would be ours Ten thousand years of peace. This is a Brother, sister, fall on your knees And the blush of the flower tastes Of false gods and trickery Mercy, mercy, my son, you belong to me On Easter Sunday Too bad the internet doesn't work here Because I forgot the rest of the song (laughs) And I wish that I could die for thee On a technicolor Calvary, Egypt would be ours 10,000 years of peace. Let's go. <laughs> That's all that, I remember, but yeah. you get the idea. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know that feeling. That, that song, that I don't know, I haven't sung, sung that song in a long time, and I was just like, mm, I don't know. Should, should I still be singing that song? I certainly don't relate to it anymore. Yeah. That's, a, that's a big thing to pull something yeah. from 20-some-odd years ago. 30. 30? Oh. I wrote that song 30 wow. years ago. You outgrow songs. <laughs> you outgrow songs, and you outgrow questions, and you outgrow the things I still like about that are not endemic to what the song is actually saying. Weird, huh? Yeah, it's just the wordplay. Yeah, I was so that was kind of in, inspiring me. I'm, I'm, it's funny you have these moments, or I have, I'm having a moment today of uh, how, how indirect I've been my entire career yeah. and subversive. Because uh, I, was, I was thinking about the, that was making me, that like, what I was thinking about was like you're popping into um, like Christian themes or like yeah. a w- Western Christian mm-hmm. themes that are familiar to most people. And I purposely in my work inside of Christian music avoided that right. because it was just, one, it was too easy. Two, it didn't have any power to me. Yeah. And so I, 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 I found like, and this is me looking back on all that work and kind of judging it and kind of like what did I do literary wise there? Um, but I, I had difficulty I, 
saying like Jesus or being really concrete about the ideas that I was writing about. I preferred to write about a theology in a context with other poetry or situationally, things like that. But the direction, like say for now, where it's very popular among the only, I think, surviving marketable Christian music artists now are praise and worship people. So it's our God and naming what God is and what God does. And I'm like, I just never felt comfortable doing that. And so I'm listening to the luxury of an artist like you being able to use those tool because like we were just kind of talking about, like outside of the church, yeah. it, it actually doesn't have the same meaning, strangely. Well, I wouldn't anymore. And I wouldn't Why? use those. Well, to me, they also seem tired. Those images seem tired. Oh, fair enough. Um, and then I'll, I'll, next next round, I'll, I'll play you something that I just wrote. That's a little bit about the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 yeah, like like um, I understand avoid. I understand avoiding those things. I've never written a song that uses the word rain. I, yeah, or or walking. Yeah, I won't use either of those words in a song on purpose. There, and you, I may be shooting myself in the foot. For it, but You're I just so can't live in myself. If I <laughs> but there are things you see and you walk right around. Yeah, um, so I'm not going to use that. But that that song, and then with the fact that we were like jamming out earlier to <laughs> Dave, Dave Matthews, there was a song that Dave Matthews did that um, was about Mary, Mary, yeah. and the birth of uh, Jesus, and completely like not biblically correct. If for those of you who are concerned about it, but he. Like, I was inspired. Like, about that time that song came out, I was horrified by my own work. Like, I did, <laughs> seriously, I was, like, yeah. just walking around like Charlie Brown, just not ever wanting to be seen or associated with any of that stuff again, but I really liked that song. Yeah. It was, like, really cool, and it was evocative to me of all the things that actually, it made, it hit me hard because I felt like I was losing something about my faith that was in a Dave Matthews songs of all things that was actually rather irreverent and taking something that meant something to my community, and I kind of liked it, and I didn't know how to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. But at the, so, but that, and all that to say is that I was like, if Dave Matthews can write about the body, like the incarnation, actually, mm -hmm. of these like real things as real living people or ideas, not just the way I was treating it, why am I not doing that? Yeah, like there was some part of that. So in the, the last project that I actually did for contemporary Christian music, it was an exercise in me at like if. In, like in the back of my mind if Jesus were like actually like just a flesh and blood human being right. not if for me anymore like it was an exercise in that carnality of it and so this is a, a result of actually a Dave Matthews influence from that particular song um, but with my same weirdness of me in it I'll, I'll see if I can get through this it's been a while I've, since I played it too Testimony come now quickly whisper in my ear celebration Peace at last not far away empty sheet and of our old grave salvation
Great song. I couldn't resist being a little Tim to your day. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, <right>. Tim. <laughs> Thanks, Tim Reynolds. I don't have enough pedals to be Tim Reynolds. <laughs> if, if, Deep you're not nerd aware, joke. if you're Deep not aware, Deep nerd joke. If you're not aware of the the recording project with Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds from live from Luther College, and you like guitar work, you have to check that out. It's dated now, but it's. It will change your life, I'm convinced, if you haven't heard it yet. In some way. Should I, should I play one more and then we'd be done? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm in a songwriting group that I've been in for many years, and it's run by this really great musician called Matt the Electrician, who is who is an electrician um, and also a great singer-songwriter. And, um, and he basically sends us a prompt every week, and we have to use that in a song. Just nothing, nothing earth shattering about that. Um, and I'll go through stretches where I'll do like two or three months at a time. And it's, the idea is not to write something good; it's just to write something and send it in and, and keep going. And it's it's um, the idea that the quantity improves the quality over time. And uh, it's definitely made me a better writer. And it's also I've come up with some like real shitty songs too. Um, <laughs> And but, this is one. Yeah, <laughs> no, it is. This is one of my shitty songs from the thing um, that I just think would just be the appropriate tone to end this conversation on. Um, but ba but basically, the you, you have to use the prompt as is, right? So you can't change the tense of a verb. You can't add, make it plural or singular or whatever. And, and you have to use the words in the order. So... Um, and it doesn't have to be the title of the song. It doesn't have to be the first, the first word of the song or anything like that. It just needs to be in there. And it's really nice because the terror of the blank page is truly that. So any limitation is a good thing for creativity. Um, and people get real fancy with it. It's like if it's a three-word prompt, they'll put two at the end of one line and one at the next or something. You know, people do that. Whatever you need to do to get yourself going. But anyway, every once in a while you get these prompts in your inbox and you're just like, what am I going to do with that? So the prompt was elevator repair guy. <laughs> so like, how did, that is the like least singable situation. It's rude. <laughs> it's rude, right? And I asked Matt, I'm like, one time I was like, like where do you get these prompts? And he's like, oh, well, no. You know, like he's just reading a book and he'll just find a word. He doesn't think about it too much. And, um, you know, I have uh, I have a lot of albums, but the last three um, have come from the songwriting group. Almost all of the songs have come wow. from the songwriting group. So I take the shitty ones and try to make them better. Um, but this one just stayed shitty. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for listening. Jennifer, thank you so much for this. Thank you, I love you. Thank you for saying yes, and I love I you love too. I love you and God. <laughs> See y'all tonight on the main stage. Maybe that's fast. Imagine the elevator repair guy for heaven. Picture how very busy he must be. All the politics, well, not to mention the pressure. Of getting everyone where they're supposed to be. I hope the people in line are very patient. I'm sure that guy is doing the best he can. 
I bet some days are better than others. I bet some days it's a living hell. You know I can play trumpet. Come on. Well, like, I don't have one here. You don't. Um. <laughs> can you whistle? I bet you can whistle. No, not, not in public. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going well. No, it's not at all. I'm going to keep going. Imagine the elevator repair guy for heaven. Picture how very busy he must be. All the politics, well, not to mention the pressure of being God's VIP. That's where I'm at now. That's what I'm saying? That's where I'm at now. Thank you all very much. You guys, thank you very much. And right now, you can thank Erin. Uh, her merch is right here. And it's probably one of the most convenient times for you to say thank you. Yeah, I have a record coming out at the end of September. It's not out yet, but I brought some for y'all. So thank you guys very much for listening today.